Hi guys, Geechu64 here, and today we're going to talk about Season 8, Episode 5 of Game of whatever this is, because it's not Game of Thrones. It's not Game of Thrones, it's Shame of Thrones. This is... I didn't even want to, I wasn't... I don't have the energy to do another rant video like I did before. I'm getting over being sick. Um, and I kind of just wish this show would have gone away, and I just never saw this final season. It is terrible. It's terrible. Every episode since uh, episode three has gotten progressively worse. Like episode three was the time I was like, oh man, this show is is falling apart. And then episode four, I was like, it is still falling apart worse. And then this is even worse. This is so terrible. Um, again, if you like the way the final season is going, please stop watching this video. Cause I don't want to ruin your fun. That is your disclaimer. Um, just stop stop watching this video if you are liking the final season. Um, if you're like me, and it seems to be a lot of other people, uh, the final season of Game of Thrones will go down as one of the worst endings in t television history. Uh, this pass is lost by leaps and bounds. It, it passes Dexter. Dexter had a horrible uh, series finale. This is, this is on a whole nother level, guys. Um... Man, I can barely even articulate the real... <laughs> um, okay, let's start with what's good about the episode. <laughs> we'll get that out of the way. There's a couple of things. Uh, very few, so it's probably not going to take me very long, but let's talk about what's good. Kyburn's death. The way Kyburn is, is killed in this episode is just awesome. Uh, I chuckled. Um... I loved it. Uh, Kyburn just unceremoniously getting his head bashed in by the mountain is exactly how I thought he'd go out. Um, or I had hoped he'd go out. It's exactly how he should have gone out. And it's exactly how Game of Thrones used to handle their deaths. Um, just very, okay, done. Uh, now they want to handle their deaths like it's some kind of epic, you know, with epic fights and epic buildup and epic this and epic that, whether it makes sense to the characters or whether it fits in with the story or the world or anything else, it doesn't matter. So Kyburn's unceremonious death fits into Game of Thrones. That was good. Um, the Hound Mountain fight. Um, I know a lot of people probably don't like it. Uh, I liked it. I, I thought it was all right. Uh, I thought it was well choreographed. I thought it was, there were some scenes that were really good. I don't know what the hell. Why did they just let Cersei just walk on by him? Seriously, the hound just let Cersei just walk on out. Didn't even do anything. <laughs> um, and he like, I got to find the mountain. And then, so they have this scene where you're like, oh, well, Clegane's still in uh, that zombie, you know, creature. He's still in there. So that way to try and give weight to the fight, because like, we all thought, hey, his brother's dead, so he's just fighting a zombie, so what's really so good about that? Um, the fight was all right. Uh, I thought it was shot pretty well. Um, I kind of like how he just kept trying to kill him, and he couldn't do it, and then the only way he could take him out was literally just to dive bomb him out the window. Um, but the problem is, uh, okay, <laughs> I'll put that in the bad category, because what it is is it's more character regression. Why does the Hound care so much about going back to kill him? Like, honestly, him living as a zombie thing is is worse than him dying anyway. So I understand why the Hound all of a sudden was like, I got to go kill my brother. Okay, whatever. Um, all right, trying to stay on the good things. Uh, the Tyrion Jamie, um, you know, uh, scene where Tyrion releases Jamie. Um, that was really solid. I mean, it, it's one of the strongest relationships in the show. And, um, you know, Peter Dinklage, you know, honestly, it's the actors. The actors are what made that scene so good because it wasn't the writing. Nothing, nothing in the writing in the, in this last couple episodes are worth being in a good category at all. Um, not even as a byproduct. Tyrion and Jamie's scene though, that was really good, which brings me to the real problem here. <laughs> um, the final season is very well acted and very well directed. I am... I feel really bad for the actors, the film crew, because um, they have done a really good job trying to breathe life into the worst writing I've ever seen on this scale of entertainment. Um, it is just terrible. It is just some of the worst fan fiction I've ever read. I don't even read fan fiction, but I would imagine that the fan fiction 
this is pretty bad. Sorry for the sharp edits. Um, I'm trying to edit out my coughing. My throat is still recovering. So if I sound weird, that's why. And if there's edits, that's why. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure you have very low expectations for everything at this point after seeing this episode. So not a real shocker. Um, as I was saying, you know, it's very well directed, well acted. It's really disappointing that uh, all their efforts just go to complete waste. So, all right, let's get to the bad stuff. That's probably why you're here because there's tons of it. There's tons of bad things. I'm only going to talk about like five or six because I don't have time to talk about every single problem with this episode. I'll try and go in order of how I think it is. So let's, let's start with Varys. Varys is dead within like 10 minutes of the episode. Again, uh, Varys last season was like, I'm not going to betray Danny. You know, and if you're fell in the realm, I'll come straight to you and let you know. Well, he's a liar. Um, you know, not really a big shock there. He shifts alliances all the time, which is what the whole problem was with that whole debate in last season. Um, so him just switching just because and not even going directly to Daenerys, I just, I don't know if I'd necessarily buy that as a character motivation. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, he's writing out things to send around to let everybody know that, you know, John's the rightful heir and, you know, whatever. Um, and then he gets toasted. Just, that's it. End of Varys, uh, <clears throat> one of the best manipulators in Game of Thrones, um, one of the best players, um, <clears throat> just like Littlefinger, just snuffed out instantly for for no real good reason, just just to have him gone. Um, it's stupid. Um, John, uh, the next thing is John. John still does nothing. John went from knowing nothing to doing nothing. Like, he has not done anything all season. What has he done? He found out he's Aegon Targaryen. Okay. What else did he do? He hugged Arya. Uh, he told Sansa and Arya his secret. He flew around on a dragon. He killed a few undead. And that's it. And then he killed some, you know, um, some Lannister soldiers. And that's it. That's it. That's all he's done. He's just wandered around throughout the season uh, with no purpose, no direction. And his character is just completely lost. I don't even know what they're doing with him anymore. Um, again, this is comes back to my whole problem with episode three. And people can debate me if they want, I guess. But, I mean, the thing is, is John's story was all about defending the wall and defending the White Walker or de defeating the White Walkers and defending humanity. That's over with. <clears throat> and now his character's aimless. There's, there's no purpose to him anymore. He just wanders around and it's so pointless. Um Next thing is Arya. Arya, what the hell are they even doing with Arya? Um, she goes with the Hound all the way to the middle of the city, and then all of a sudden the Hound's like, well, vengeance is bad. Turn away. Go away. She's like, well, thank you, and then she just leaves. What? And then we get Arya running throughout King's Landing, uh, you know, terrified, and she's getting trampled. And all this nonsense. And this whole scene, it goes on forever. It goes on forever. This is like 2012 Game of Thrones edition. This is just a disaster movie. The day after tomorrow, Game of Thrones edition. I don't even... It's just... She's just scared and she's run through King's Landing. This is more character regression. Um, she went from like this cold, you know, assassin, uh, somewhat emotionless, to being a scared little girl running through King's Landing. Just like she was in episode one. Um, I know you can say, well, you know, everything's falling, you know, that she's basically in a war zone and this, that, and the other thing. But I mean, she, like she is terrified really before anything even hits her. Um, and she's get trampled by just random, you know, just a crowd of people. It just, I don't buy it at all. It's and then in the little after features D and D were like, oh, well, yeah, uh, you know, we wanted to put Arya down there so you'd have a character you really cared about instead of watching a bunch of, you know, faceless uh, men, women, and children getting murdered. What? That's the only reason she's there? Well, it doesn't even work out anyway because it lasts forever. That's like 30 minutes of the episode. I'm just like, does the dragon run out of fire? Why the hell is, is she still murdering the city? Why is she burning everything? There's no reason. There's no buildup to it. Uh, okay, I'll segue into that in a second. But let's go to Jamie's arc. What? Uh, Jamie's arc is completely trashed. Just ball it up, throw it in the garbage. Jamie is the exact same person he was at the beginning of the show. 
Exact same person. I, I need Cersei. And we gotta die together. Okay. Oh, let's throw on a little Euron fight because people want to see that. Nobody gives a sh crap about Euron. Euron is a terrible character. He's one of the worst characters in Game of Thrones. Actually, he is the worst character in Game of Thrones. Nobody cares about him. He's a cartoon character. Um, I didn't give a crap about his fight with Jamie. There's no weight behind that. I was glad he died. That's something, I guess. Yeah, so so Jamie just completely completely wasted. I, I can't I can't believe how many characters were assassinated in this uh in this episode. Character arcs regressed, character arcs destroyed, um, characters murdered, um literally and figuratively. Just terrible. It's terrible. Sorry guys, I'm literally losing my voice, so I'm gonna have to not last too much longer. Uh uh Daenerys. What the hell? Everybody was talking about this mad queen thing, okay? Like I said from all of my videos previously, I thought Daenerys made the most sense to sit on the throne. Well, now she's apparently a psychopath. Uh they she literally the the dragon gets a major buff and just dives down and you know takes out the fleet. Um okay, and then takes out everything on the wall and everything else. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, I guess that's it. Okay. Uh, the Lannister soldiers throw down their swords and then what the bells ring. And then that apparently triggers something inside of her. I was convinced that game of Thrones, the entire, this entire final season takes place in Westworld. This is some fan fiction version of game of Thrones and some, you know, trillionaire, paid for Westworld to develop all of this stuff so he could act out what he thinks the final season should be. And the bells are what trigger Daenerys to go psychopath. You're like, cause she's actually a robot. Doesn't that make sense? Man, I solved everything. Ugh. Daenerys going psychopath is, is not viable. It's it not, even if you had two seasons to build it up, I still wouldn't believe it because the way it was executed, uh, I could believe that um, she could go off the deep end or that something could happen to make people question, you know, if she was insane, but not the way it's executed here. Here, everybody surrendered. She got what she wants. Bells ring. And then she just loses her shit. She just loses it. She just starts murdering everybody, men, women, and children. And like a 25 to 30 minute scene of her just flying around the city, murdering random people. For no reason, no reason, nothing in her character over the entire show has ever once made any of the audience members think that Daenerys would literally murder women and children for no reason. Now, what I would buy is that if in order to get to Cersei, Daenerys had to murder the people who were right around the Red Keep. In other words, to get to Cersei, she flew directly to the Red Keep and just blasted the Red Keep with fire. Um, you know, and she didn't care about the people on the ground who were killed by the debris. Um, that I would buy. I would believe that. And people would probably think she's crazy because she just killed a bunch of innocents. Um, but it was in a direct notion to try and take out her enemy. Her just flying around for 25 minutes, just blasting everybody. I just don't buy that in the least. Uh, we don't see her reaction or motivation. We don't understand why she did that. We're just supposed to be like, well, she's insane now. Um, Cause the whole time she's on the back of the dragon flying around, murdering everybody. We don't get a single close up shot of her face. The last close up we get of her face is right when the bells ring. Uh, she gets triggered and um, goes after everybody. Yeah. But seriously, uh, there's so much character regression. I, I can't, I wish I could rant more on this. I wish I had more energy uh, for people who are, are not have not been watching my videos. Um, the, my first rant video, I got quite a bit of traction on. Um, I don't really like to do rant videos. Um, I'm very good at it because if something is really upsetting me and I'm passionate about a specific franchise, I will do a rant video. Well, I don't have all that much energy today. And this is me low energy, believe it or not. Um, I can't even... 
articulate at this point how disappointing this final season is. It is so terrible. Um, I'm going to have to do a whole video uh, on this season because what this season has done is it, it's a masterclass in how to regress your character just to serve a forced plot. That's what this, that's what this season is. It is just terrible fan fiction. It, it's, I can't, I can't even believe I'm like literally dumbfounded of how dumb this is. I'm, I went from being, you know, angry to disappointed to being dumbfounded. I'm just dumbfounded at this point. I don't even care what happens in the last episode. And maybe that was the whole point. I just want to lower all your expectations. So that way when you get to the final episode, if it beats your subpar expectation, that's a win, right? I have no idea. I don't even, I don't know what they're even doing anymore. Ugh. again, sorry for the edits. Uh, I'm really trying to get all the coughing out. I'm done. I'm done with this video. Um, I do have more Game of Thrones videos coming. Uh, you know, I originally was just done. I was done and because it's not even fun to talk about it anymore. And it's at this point, it's just therapeutic to talk about it. It's just therapeutic to share my thoughts with other people who um, it seems to be as the series progresses has fallen more and more into the camp of this is the worst thing ever. So um, I want to thank new subscribers. Um, who subscribe based on my other videos. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or don't. I'm not a beggar. I'm Geek True 64 and I'll always tell you the truth.